What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey and today I'm actually on vacation in Florida. That's why there's a different background in my mic. Probably sounds different too. So that's another reason why I won't have quite as many videos out this week. But today we're going to do a map guide on Crystal Cavern. I'm going to tell you guys all my tips and tricks for Crystal Cavern. Map positioning, what are the best brawlers for each role, the best team comps, and a bunch of other stuff. Alright, so let's get into it. Alright, so let's start out with positioning. So Crystal Cavern is a pretty open map. It's fairly hard to spawn trap on Crystal Cavern and it's usually pretty free for long. People can switch sides fairly easily. It's kind of hard to sneak up on people. It tends to be a bit more long range compared to other smash and grab maps. Now, which side you're on as an aggro or as a support brawler isn't particularly important on Crystal Cavern as both sides are fairly even. The only main difference is the left side has that wall, so it's a little bit easier for either aggro or a ricochet to get more value on those sides, but it's not a big deal depending on which side of the map you're on. Now, if you're a gem grabber, of course you wanna be in the middle, but just like all maps, you pretty much wanna have one brawler on each side of the map, so someone in the middle, someone in the left, and someone on the right. This is definitely important as smash and grab. You always wanna help stop flanking, as anytime someone flanks behind you and your team, they can put a lot of pressure on you and force you into the other enemy teammates or just into bad situations in general. So make sure to always try and have one brawl on each side of the map, of course you do want to play it to how the enemy is playing the game as well. So let's go over how you want to act as each roll on Crystal Cavern and let's start out with the gem carrier. So of course as a gem carrier you want to be going down the middle of the map and as in general at the start of games focus on dodging shots and getting damage before you get gems but if there are easy gems that spawn on your side of course definitely pick those up now as a gem carrier as well, when you're in the middle, if there's two people in the middle, always just focus on shooting down the middle. But if there's one person down the middle and it's another low damage brawler like a Pam or a Poco or maybe even a Jesse, you can consider shooting a little bit on one of the sides of the map to try and help out one of your teammates as oftentimes whichever team gets the first kill establishes control of the map early on. So you're pretty much just going to be shooting down the middle for the most part and then maybe getting a few shots on the side, not too many, you don't want to spend too much time shooting these sides to try and help one of your teammates get a kill or help get better positioning. Now there's actually a good amount of good gem carriers on this map. If you like playing Pam, this is going to be her best map. She's not necessarily the best gem grabber on Crystal Cavern, I think this meta is not great for her, but this is definitely her best map. Jesse is another really good option on Crystal Cavern. Uh, Poco is really strong right now as well. Crow is pretty good and Bo is not bad. None of the gem carriers are particularly that bad here, but I would maybe stick to Jesse, Pam, and uh, Poco. Okay, and real quick, while we're going over the gem carriers, let's go over where you want to place Pam's turrets and Jesse's turrets. So for Pam, most of the times you want to play them on the green dots. Those are going to be pretty safe areas to play and you're going to get a good amount of use out of them. Now, if you're being really aggressive, you can play them on the red. They're probably not going to last as long, but for instance, if you're trying to spawn trap them and you have good positioning, you might be able to get away with it and get pretty good value out of it. Normally, you want to do the green though. All right, now for Jesse. Now, the ideal placement is actually going to be the yellow places. It's going to be behind the wall. Now, anytime you're placing her turret though, you want to be careful. If you're placing it down, make sure it's not going to die right away or really fast. You want to have it stay up a good amount of time. Put some good pressure on the enemy. So if you're doing those yellow spots, make sure there's not going to be enemies right there who can just shoot it down right away. Now, if you have Jesse's star power, it can keep it up some, but you do still want to be careful with that. So the yellow is going to be the ideal placement. If you can't do that, you might do the green. Um, if you don't have control of the map, if the enemy has control of the map and you're sort of pushed back, I probably wouldn't do the yellow. You want to place it to where it's going to stay up a good amount of time and put pressure on the enemy. All right, so that's going to be the main tips for the gem carriers. Now let's go over how you want to play as an aggro brawler on Crystal Cabins. All right, now as an aggro brawler, and now it doesn't matter which side of the map you go, but whichever side you do go on, you might consider stopping on that square in the grass for a second or two to see what brawler is on the enemy side. 
because this is a bit of an open range map and all the aggro characters really don't have much range with maybe the exception of Tara. Tara, you might not have to do this, but see what enemy is on the other side. Let them get a little bit closer to you and then you can come out and maybe surprise them, deal even more damage. Now it depends, like especially if there's a spike on the other side, you're really gonna have to do this. If it's a long range character, you might have to do this as well. But if it's another aggro, you can consider coming out and getting some chip shots on them and try and get control. So you're basically just gonna be focusing on whoever is on your side of the map. And then once that person dies, you can move up. And once you move up, you're pretty much gonna be shooting either left or right going in. You're probably gonna wanna go up top and go above the top four square and try and force the enemy team into the middle and the other side of the map. That's gonna group them up a lot more. And you should have easy shots between you and the gem carrier in the middle. One of you should have easy shots because it's gonna be hard for them to evade both of you. It sort of forces them. You're basically pinching them together and they really don't have much room to run except for back to their spawn or the other side of the map. So that's really gonna group the enemy team up. And if you can get control like that on your side of the map, it makes it really hard for the enemy team to push through. They basically have to use supers in a lot of those cases, but that's gonna be your goal as an aggro is just to clear your side and then we go up on the uh, further side of the map and try and force the enemy team in towards the middle and just build up your supers and of course get kills. Now aggro is always a pretty simple role, so that's gonna be it for the aggro tips. So let's go into the support and make sure guys, I'll tell you who are the best brawlers for each role after I go over all the roles. All right, so now let's go over how to play a support brawler on Crystal Caverns. So as a support brawler, you're gonna be going to the side like normal, and if you're a Ricochet or a Brock, you might do one or two shots down the middle before you go to the side, but unlike an aggro, you don't need to hide in the grass at all. Just go straight away to the side and try and get damage on whatever enemy is on your side of the map. Now it's pretty simple, just once you win that battle, then you're gonna be focusing on the middle. Unlike an aggro brawler, you're not gonna be going really high up for the most part. You're mostly gonna be staying towards the middle of your side and shooting towards the middle of the map and helping out the gem carrier. If you get a team wipe, then you might go really high up and shoot towards the enemy spawn, but for the most part, you're not gonna be going really high up as a support brawler because you just have too low health and you can get surprised in the grass right away from that square, so you have to be careful there. If you're pinching another enemy brawler with a gem carrier or an aggro, it might work, but you still wanna be really careful as you don't wanna lose control on your side of the map. All right, now let's go over the suggested brawlers for Crystal Cavern. In my opinion, the best gem carriers are gonna be Jesse, Poco, and Pam. Those are gonna be the three best, and then Crow is also pretty good. Bo is not bad, but to me, he's a distant fifth compared to those guys. Jesse is really, really strong. Pam, it's her best map. Poco is just strong in general right now. Poco gets a nerf, I probably wouldn't recommend him on this map, but he's just pretty good in general. And then as aggro, your best ones are gonna be Nita and Tara, but Bo and Daryl, not Bo, Bull and Daryl are pretty good as well. Tanks are still strong right now, so I would definitely not underrate those guys. They're still pretty decent, but Tara and Nita are definitely gonna be my best two aggros. And then for support brawler, Spike is gonna be my number one, no question. Ricochet is gonna be my number two, no question. And then Colt's gonna be maybe a distant third, but he's definitely third. Uh, Ricochet and Spike are definitely the two best support brawlers, so I would definitely recommend those two if you have them. So as far as team comps, in my opinion, one of the best team comps on this map is gonna be Nita, Spike, and Jesse. Those are honestly Probably the three strongest brawlers in Smash and Grab, and they're all pretty good on this map. Another good comp is gonna be like a Pam, a Ricochet, and a Nita, that's another good comp. Or you can go like a Poco, a Nita, and a Spike. There's a good amount of good comps on this map, so definitely switch it up. Keep in mind, you might want a little bit of range, but tanks can still work on this map as well. Oh, and another thing to keep in mind is whatever team comp you run, make sure you have enough damage from at least one of your brawlers to be able to take out a Jesse turret with her star power, as Jesse is really strong on this map, and you're probably gonna see a good amount of Jessies. And if you're playing Ricochet, make sure to go on the left side of the map, as there's gonna be some really good bounce shots on that top left wall as a Ricochet. You can easily get a good amount of damage over there. All right, everyone, that's it for my map guide on how to play Crystal Cavern. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Now, I do want to remind you guys, I'm not going to be able to stream this Thursday as I'll be on vacation, um, and there won't be quite as many videos this week, so I do apologize for that, but I'll be back on it soon next week. And guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will catch you later.